All right, ladies and gentlemen, apparently uh, it looks like they have already started the draw phase before we were ready, uh, Thatcher. I was ready. I wasn't. You, <laughs> exactly, you weren't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention, <laughs> it's always my fault, right? A hundred percent of the time. You're always right, so therefore whenever you're wrong, it is always your fault. You are very much correct. All right, so <laughs> we have two games out. Let me immediately pull up the drafts. The drafts. There we go. So Stitches and Tychus. First pick, Uther. Uh, yep. Uh, I'd I would say exactly the same. First pick, likely Uther, unless uh, unless they really want Tassadar. Who knows? It is uh, my insanity who, in fact, get the first pick this time. Yeah. So it's going to be Uther. That's for certain. I, 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 I do not know of, of any other champion that would ever want to first pick over an Uther. Tassadar. <laughs> That's your other option. But uh, I doubt that is... I, I still agree with you that it's probably going to be Uther. Unless they are going for a particular team comp. But uh, we will mm. have to see. They're actually, they're actually bringing it down to the wire to pick Uther. So, um, yeah. I wonder what happens if that timer runs out. Hmm. I hmm. wonder as well. Yeah, but it's Uther. Yeah, I win. I win. Everyone wins. No, because... <laughs> Techno wins. Techno always wins. Everyone no, wins. You guys can't win because I'm already winning. Because if you're not winning, you're losing. There is no I in team, but there is a part, an I in pie. And there's a type of pie that is a meat pie, and meat is an anagram of team. So you're on the team. Act like it. I... We are winning. I am winning. <laughs> and we have Artas. So far, Our team's almost star. an exact there we go. mirror of each other. Only last time, they caught us a bit off guard with a... Uh, Tyrael picker. But that was my insanity. Uh, if my insanity really wants, they can pick up Tyrael and Illidan right now. Tyrael, Illidan, yeah. Or Tyrael and Nubarak. There's Tyrael. Solid pick. Uh, second, a Nubarak. Yay! Yay, so you win. My insanity going for their more standard strategy of... Picking out the warriors first, and then just dealing with the assassin issue at a later date. Because they do not have the two spots for their two assassins, or, as MYI have been known to do, bring out the Zagara, if the assassins all get picked up. But that's quite unlikely, because we don't have the extra two bands. Yeah, that's something uh, uh, something different from the normal games that we cast, is that this time there are no bands during the midway, uh, dur during, the, uh, dur during the draft phase itself, so... That means that I'm expecting SK to pick up Regar, uh, or Regar, depending on how you want to pronounce him. Is there an official pronunci uh, pronunciation? Guide it's Regar. Regar. Same as Re same as Rainer. But Rainer is a Y, and yes, but it's still pronounced the same. And we have SK bringing out the Nova, and their second pick. If they've already picked up Nova, they might just be going for a almost mirror comp and bring out the Illidan. Yeah, but then they're running straight into Uther and into Tyrael. I mean, th last that... time. No, no. Uh, it, Tyrael was on the side of uh, Illidan in the previous. This is true. This and is true. with uh, Tyrael, you can actually protect your team from Illidan. This is very true. Well, the other options available are if they're going for their second assassin now, they have a Falstad, they have Rainer, they are available. Vala is also open for pick if that's what they choose. At the moment, this is looking like a, an interesting team, or looking like a very gank-heavy team comp. I expect it to be Arthas Nova wandering around together for SK for their gank squad. Whereas at the moment, I can only see a Nubrak in the gank squad for my insanity. So it's a question of who their second member of their gank squad will be. And it is Rhaegar well, as the next pickup for SK. At so least I got that one right. Yep, you were correct. Well, they... They already had the Tastar support, but Tastar seems to fill a role of sort of an assassin support mix with a little bit of warrior in there. He is just a utility uh, hero, very useful in almost every scenario. Yeah, so picking a... Also, the amount of vision that he gives with his oracle ability is just phenomenal. Um, there's almost no ganking a Tastar unless you time it perfectly right after he popped that oracle. So very for now, though, much so. it is going to be my insanity with two pickups, so... No Nova, that means they are going to be picking up a Falstad, and they're going to be picking up a Diablo? I'd say a Reina. They already have two so they already have uh, two warriors, so Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Fa I'm pretty Falstad, sure Falstad Reina or Falstad, Falstad Vala or Reina Vala. I'm expecting Falstad Illidan, to be honest. I'm not sure Illidan is a great idea against this particular team uh, comp. Yeah. Yeah, especially with the ancestral healing. If you don't get someone down then ancestral healing is going to pop them right back up. 
Yeah, I'd say I'd say personally, I'd prefer Reina Falstad. But nope, it is Illidan. It is Illidan in the end anyway. Illidan, by the time just playing him a lot lately. Lately, he is a fantastic pick. It seems. Yeah, I like Illidan, and that means that you have Rainer as the uh, secondary uh, assassin, or, or Falstad, or Fals. Uh, yeah, Falstad. That was the one. I was uh, not Rainer. Stop! Stop confusing me, Thatcher. I Te Tekken League is confused. It, it hurt itself in the in the confusion. Oh dear. Well, try not to faint. Try to snap out of that confusion soon. Well, as we wait for my insanity to lock in their last assassin pick, and there is Zagara. the Zagara! We did call that out very early, that my insanity have been known to bring out the Zagara instead of another assassin, so this is pretty nice. They have the full face engage, and then they have hmm. Zagara at the back for just the CC to remove Nova if they want to just cancel out her ult. They have many ways to cancel out the uh, triple tab, but that's what's going for, but it's more likely that we will see the... Uh, I don't like we'll it. see the precision strike. I don't like this. They don't have you a don't ranged like assassin. They don't yes, have they a ranged do. assassin. Yes, they do. Which is a ranged assassin. Zagara. It's not an assassin. It does the bout the, does exactly the same job. I I, I refuse to, to see her. Zagara with range, in, with range and damage increase as her second talent, plus the hunter killers will equally, will easily outmatch almost any assassin in terms of damage. Ah, true enough. But the they... issue is you simply have to run away from the hunter killer and then it's sort of negated or kill it off. But she is very effective, especially in this kind of team comp where there's so much CC that she can drop down all her abilities for the entire time and she can be split pushing while any anything else does happen. And on this map, she is very good for helping take the seeds. And the last pick, Kerrigan. Kerrigan. So two pick. queens. Uh, sorry, it's a brute lord and a queen. A brood mother and a queen. Brood mother. Oh yeah, of course. Because uh... all right, so it's SK Gaming against my sanity, and we are heading into game number two as we're flipping over to the heroes clients. Let's go draft, and I believe the draft is complete. So everybody has already selected their heroes, and the yep, cast is already selected. Everyone's locked in. I believe we are ready. I I, I sure hope so. But uh, out of all the players, only 3 out of 4 out of 10 have currently ready up. And the observers also need to ready up here. Well, well we are already readied up. Players readying up very quickly. 6, 7. We are currently waiting for the big plus sign on my <laughs> screen. And we are waiting for BZ and Linked to ready up. And then we will be ready to go. I'm guessing the players just preparing themselves mentally for the battle before we get into it here. 9 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Come on, big plus. Who are we waiting? Yeah, I think it is the big plus we're waiting for. <laughs> Who well, is big plus? Oh, okay, no no okay, matter what, we're now. currently in game number 2 out of 3, which means that if my insanity wins this one on the Garden of Terror, they're going to be at, they're, they're going to be on the top of the standings at the end of this week. Can we have a smoke in to... Can, <laughs> um, I really wish he'd done that during the actual break. Exactly. Yeah, so it looks yeah. like some of the players are in a hurry. So, smoke break. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, oh, no. Big okay, big big we big just got fixed. Fired. Yeah, ready up. <laughs> we will get going. But, uh, Shino no ready. Come on. Come on, Shino. There we go. Shino 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Let's get go. ready to rumble. That's the wrong sport. Doesn't and there's matter. No in this game, so there's no boxing gloves. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Gaslow soon. He yeah. will have his time. He has no escape, and very and his abilities take ages to do what the job the job that most of these characters are doing. But soon he uh, will have his day. I, I like how um, Ace of Space is saying go smoke if needed, but he can actually start the game. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the start uh, game button. Press it. It's 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 yes, right in the there middle. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Took long enough. We are going in game. Match starting in zero. Well, not really zero. We're on the Garden of Terror loading screen. So for those who are new to Heroes of the Storm, fight the Shamblers. Um, these will appear during the night time. Night time happens every so often. Then if you fight them, you destroy them. You get some seeds. If you get 100 seeds, you can build your own monster in your base. Control it by right-clicking and then wreak havoc on your enemies. That's how the map works. We're looking at game number two between my insanity and SK Gaming winner.
becomes the leader of the rankings in week number five. This is very much true. So as we can see, it is SK on the left-hand side of the Garden of Terror and MYI on the right side. And looking at the teams, I still think that MYI came out a bit ahead in the draft here due to the fact that uh, SK bringing out the Kerrigan is a bit risky to me. On the flip side, though, if they want to win, they have to play risky. That's how they. That's how you beat MYI. MYI is very weak in the early stage of the game. That's what we've been seeing every single match. So don't give them a finger because they will take your hand. And I think that that is the uh, kind of policy that SK is running with right now. I would agree. We're seeing Linked hanging around the mid lane, whereas SK moving into that bot lane. Looks like they're finally going for the bushwhack strategy, but revealed. Very nice there by Shinobu. Oracle also used, so we're not going to see an early gank for either team right now. And uh, Linked, all, they did instantly pick, uh, pick it off those creep tumors. What was it? Was, uh, oh, that was Beezy giving them the vision with Oracle. So they're clearing up that creep very, very early. And Shinobu finally going to move into lane. Needs to be careful which way he goes. There we go. Going in through the bot lane. So that he does not get picked off by BKB and Ral. And as we can see, MYI already taking their easy camp. Doing the opposite of what happened on the Cursed Hollow. Getting oh, she opened in a lot of trouble. He works. gets locked up at the root. There's Ral with the pool. And that's the end. Goodbye, Zagara. Enter the swarm. Enter the swarm Heroes. indeed. Very Heroes. well played. Heroes. Really Just using the Kerrigan moments. to the advantage. Uh, the Kerrigan ready. mechanics to their advantage in the early game. And now, with a kill under their belt, they are finally going to rotate around and begin on that easy cam. Very nice timing with the stun there by Ral, cancelling out the giant auto attack and the shield there also cancelling it out. So I'm really liking Ral's use of the mechanics of Kerrigan here. Looks like he has been practicing with her. Uh, Kerrigan actually together with Arsis is amazing. We just saw what they can do in that bottom lane. Land the root, let it expire, and then subsequently pull them back in so they have nowhere to go, especially if you can combine it with your impalement. For now though, both teams are heading towards Shambler's seed. The seed race has begun. And it looks like um, MYI at this point is a little bit better in uh, getting those seeds. Yeah, they are a little bit better, but SK got to catch up as they take the small camp here, and that will be all the small camps for both teams gone. Don't forget those seeds. There we go. They're tied up. One of these teams is going to have to go for the hunt. Oh, we could be in Fred's meeting each other there in that bottom jungle area. And neither team really wanting to make a move yet. Both just playing it slowly and safely, waiting for an opportunity. And, and uh, MYI realized we really don't want to go in onto the Shambler here until our team is ready. So we're just going to take this easy camp. Smart move there by MYI. But now it's uh, going to be a uh, 3 versus 3 situation here at the easy camp. One of the uh, golems has already gone down. But they have to be careful. SK is already dealing a lot of damage. Aragi coming in. Shinobu as well. They're on to BKB. BKB doesn't really have anywhere to escape to. But he is very, very tanky. Will he go down though? Yes, that's one kill. Now Freds is in a lot of trouble. He has to fall back low. Even more so, he is down. And Nova coming all the way from the top lane together with Uther to try and take down this easy camp. It's the Battle of Titans here. Araragi in a lot of trouble. He's taking quite a bit of damage. Jumps in with his um, with his sword. But is that really what he wanted to be doing? He's sticking Deal. away. Good heal. <sighs> so, so close. But, yeah. Big the easy camp taken by SK. SK getting a little bit of an advantage here. And now moving to the top side of the map. And they might just go for the, sh for the Shambler here. If they want to. Or I think they might do that after they've cleared the waves and just got a bit of health back. But what we saw there was a little bit of indecision for the side of MYI. A couple of their members all went into that easy camp, but like one at a time. So they weren't committed to the defense of that area at all. So it had to be let go. Now because of that, SK have pretty much full control of this top lane. But Illidan is up here. He is taking the hard camp and once his team arrives he can begin contesting the shambler but it's too late it's too late but they can still initiate a fight if they so desire i don't think they really want to because well right now sk has 90 seeds they need to go all in on this bottom lane because if sk gets another 10 and they get the first planned golem then they might be able to snowball their lead because it's so important to get ahead in this game uh, especially 
in the early stages just to get to level 10 before your opponents do. For now though, it's MYI starting off the plant, uh, rather this, uh, the Shambler. Aragi jumps onto Link, then lands onto Raul, but both of them are just going to fall back for now as MYI is taking the Golem down to, uh, or rather the Shambler down to half health. Very much so. MYI for a while there worth 5 versus 4, but uh, Zamboni has finally arrived for SK and they're gonna contest this. They stop the, fi the final seeds being gone by MY and the team fight is very much underway. Lau being dropped down quite low thanks to an Envenom, but is looking like he's gonna get out alive. Shinobu still pretty much full health, just landing all his damage. Oh, Rocky gets healed up, so he's not going down yet, but SK take down Tyriel there, and Lau jumps back in and gets picked off very quickly. This is not looking good for MY at all, and SK take that team fight in very convincing fashion. So, you were talking about indecisiveness before, and this fight completely demonstrated how indecisive MYI was. MYI, they, if they were going all in, then they should have sent Tyrael right into the center of SK, try and get his passive procced onto as many members of SK as they are team fighting, and then maybe they could have turned it around. This time though, they, they let Aragi die, and then went in. So there was no follow... Uh, there, it was basically going in one by one, and that's the worst thing you can do as a team in Heroes of the Storm. Very much so. And we're seeing SK oh, really dominate that. this game. This is still technically the early game, so if MYI are going to make their comeback, it's going to be soon, because this is what they do. They seem to lose the early game and then make it back during the late game team fights. But it's going to be very difficult for them, because SK, what they do is they gain the early lead, and then never let it go. And they have this early lead now. They're only eight seeds away compared to the 12 seeds of MY from getting their plant golem, their plant terror, sorry. And they are now pushing down the mid lane with this easy cam. This is not looking that good for MY. However, MY responding quite sensibly here. They've still got, they've got everyone in the mid lane except for two people who are in the top and bot lanes respectively, just soaking up the XP to try and bring back that level deficit. And also put down a lot of pressure onto these towers because I wouldn't put it past those guys. Actually, they managed to push all the way to the fourth. So that push in the mid lane was pretty much as effective as the solo push that Tyrael was doing in the top lane. So no nothing of value was lost there. Uh, another thing that's happening due to the fact that you were talking about soaking up experience is that now they're both... Um, they both have their heroic abilities available, and that might be just the thing that MYI needs to get back into this game, just because of the Divine Storm and the Judgment, assuming he picked that one up, and the transformation that we expect to see from Lowell. They did. All the ultimates are very much what we would expect. We have Divine Storm, Judgment, Locust Swarm, Metamorphosis, and the Devouring Moor on the side of MYI. The Devouring Moor is going to be the important ultimate here, just seeing, seeing as it can hit so many people. Depending on who it hits, all the other ones we've seen before, but it's the Devouring Wall that is the wild card here. There's the Judgment, there's the Ancestral Healing onto Roll. Wasn't really needed. Tyrael already pops Lau, being dropped low here. He is shielded, he has popped first aid. Where's the CC? Kerrigan pulls him in and he goes down. It's another two for zero in favor of SK. And they're just going to push down this mid lane now and take this fort because there is no way that MYI are going to stop them. And that was a very, very bad move by MYI. If you don't know where your enemies are, if you can't count them on the map, do not engage. They thought they had the upper hand in terms of numbers, and then suddenly, well, SK came from uh, from the shadows and took down MYI. And now also, M both teams are going to get the plant golem, but I'm expecting that SK is going to walk away with more seats after the first one. I would agree. Wow. And just Nova. Yeah, well, <laughs> Nova just got completely picked off there. And MYI now getting control. Both teams have their plant terrors. And MYI are finally just, looks like they're going to be able to pick up this Shambler, while SK in the top lane are going to be able to pick up the top lane Shambler as well. So both teams are going to have a lot of seeds by the time this is, night is over. Possibly enough for another Plant Terror each. Once the night time ends, we'll see in a second. Uh, that's not impossible. Enough there for MYI. That's pretty much impossible due to the fact that there are 180 seeds every night. So 98! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So close. So close. So close but uh, no cigar. And immediately Araragi dropping down the bulb. He's going to be waiting for the other terror in the hands of uh, Raul this time. 
Yeah, we're going to see what is properly going to be. I was about to say, we were, looks like we we're going to see a full team fight. But instead, the majority of MYI is rotating up to the top lane and just using this plant terror to delay SK. Just keep it distracted, keep their plant terror on the expiration. But MYIs will run out of time much quicker than SKs. And SK have realized, yeah, this is silly. This is a distraction we can't afford. And are instead just going to head to the bot lane, ignore the plant terror completely, and start beating it up. While a couple members of SK are staying top to deal with the MYI SK, while the rest of MYI have just rotated the top, killed the fort, and are now on their way to help out what is left of the duration of their plant terror. I have to question the decision making of SK here because look at the damage that MYI is doing. They took down two forts with one plant terror, and SK, well, is still struggling with the uh, with the fort. There we go. Finally, it goes down. But MYI slowly but surely getting back into this game due to good map position and good rotation. And also now they're jumping onto Raul. Raul in a five versus one situation. Their plant golem. That plant golem is not long for this world. Although neither is MYI, so they're going to go oh, down at the same time. Play, though. Yeah, that one is pretty, pretty good. Actually, the uh, plant golem on MII, uh, sorry, SK is already going down. Now they're actually onto BKB. BKB gets locked up. He's all alone. Although Aragi is pretty much in the same position here. Nice oh precision strike. God, that was an incredible devouring more there. Air, all the ultra pop, the ancestral healing was not enough there to save his teammate, but it looks like MYI are bringing it back. There's only two members left, we can see them here running away from Lowell, and Lowell waiting for the Archon to pop, goes in onto BZ, and BZ goes down. The phase shift was used up, and MYI, like we said, we're in the mid to late game now, and this is where MYI starts to shine. Yeah, so something about this last team fight, and um, something we've been seeing earlier in the game that wasn't going the way of MYI. MYI was making the right decisions and was making decisions. SK decided to fall back. They decided to go back on what they were doing. They were first sending all their heroes down to the bottom lane to try and take down that fort. And then eventually they left Raul alone to deal with the fort and then heading straight back to their own base. That cost them a fort in the top lane, that cost them a fort in the mid lane, and it was a very, very, well... Very interesting decision to say, uh, if they chose to just push down the bottom lane all the way to the keep, then MLI would have run out of plant terror before SK, and they would have never been able to take the keep, so SK now running straight into the team fight of MYI, and that allowed MYI to do what they're good at, and that's team fighting with Zagara. This, in fact, is the case, and that Zagara ult, as you pointed out, was one of the most important factors in that battle. We can see that Zagara has gone for a very hunter killer based build with the extra damage. Two hunter killers and both of them as mutalists rather than the extra damage and range. We have double overdrive on the side of SK. They want, they don't want that to happen again. They want MYI to pop before they can get down those very high CC ults. So very interesting. And we also have a route by Link. So they're definitely going for CC and huge amounts of damage on their side whereas MYI once again going for the double blood for blood rather than the triple Ace of Spades yet to take his level 16 ultimate waiting for the opportunity to work out what would be the most efficient here but he has already in the earlier talents taken Shrink Ray to try and deal <gasps> the with the Tassadars or the Kerrigans and Cleanse to help his team to get caught out by said heroes. Okay so now MYI has taken the uh, plant terror a little bit earlier than when we're looking at uh, SK, but there's also another thing that MY is doing here. Oh I like God. it. Dun, dun. They don't fit. How do they all fit in there? Oh, here they come. They just no, squished no, Harmony no, in a love trouble. Nice route there by BKB, and Lau has gone onto it. The position strike did go down, and wow, Cigar was popped so quickly there. And it's only BKB who's really taking damage here. The curses have gone down for both teams, and BKB is the one who gets polymorphed here. But MY in full retreat, Ace heals himself up, but BZ is on the chase. Rowan was also beating him down, and that's two kills for SK. BKB, the only one who's really taken any damage at all here, and he's just going to be out. In fact, the majority of SK appear to be being out here and getting ready to rotate down to that bot lane to help deal with that plant terror. In the meantime, it is Fred versus Ra. Ra is on the wrong side of the wall here, but he does not care. He's just waiting on these buildings, realizing that the attack speed reduction of the fort is a bit too much for him. So he's going to back out and wait for his plant to be up. There we go. Bob's up. He's just going to move back in and start wailing on this. 
whereas the rest of SK in the bot lane have already forced Araki to back up, even though he's in the Panther and has the extra health pool, doesn't want to be caught out. So, a very important thing about in that last fight was the fact that Zagara got popped immediately. If you run a composition like uh, MYI is doing, then you have to have all your ultimates, you have to go for the wombo combo, you have oh to... Oh god, Yeah, Raul's dead, but... Yeah, th that's pretty obvious. I mean, we don't he really did. Have, we, we don't have to talk <laughs> about Raul. Also, the keep went down in the background. Okay, interesting. That was um, bold. The bold another. Bit. Okay, uh, but to get back to the point I was trying to make is that if if you get your devouring maw taken out in this particular team comp, you're going to lose your team fight. And MYI, they realized that and immediately immediately retreated. Uh, which also, um, another thing I really liked about the decision making is during the retreat they sent their own plant golem to the bottom lane in order to take down the fort to about 25% hit points which MYI can now pick up with ease and get themselves onto that much ne needed level 18. Yeah, they're just gonna fit. The fort has now been finished off and that is every fort down for both teams and this is the kind of game we were seeing yesterday before the servers did done die. Both teams very even. The XP count ever so slightly in favor of SK here, which was actually fairly similar to yesterday. Kill count once again slightly in favor of SK, but with both teams having all their forts down, MYI are far from out of this game. Night and we have seen that heroes. if Shinobu How can land his ult, if all of them can land their ults the effectively, then MYI can easily win a team fight. This is all going to be down to player skill. Aragi is just acting as a ward for now. And this is also something that uh, the team of MYA has to be careful for because uh, actually there's the oh oracle coming God. out that's going to reveal our Aragi, but it doesn't really matter. The hard camp has already been taken by MYI, and they're going to take a Shambler because it will spawn in less than a second. Yep, and this has forced SK to back up a bit. They d really don't know where MYI are, although it is obvious to us that MYI are taking that shambler here they really don't want to push out and get caught out seeing as they knew that myi were hanging around this area but by the time they do react and the time they fill up that hard camp they're going to be far too late to deal with that shambler shambler does go down so now my sk knows exactly where myi is and are going to begin rotating up to the top shambler but myi are also going to be on the way and we will likely see a team fight there a team fight with a planned golem on the side of myi Looking like it will be the case. They may... MYM might wait a bit. They may just take an easy camp. Nope, they can't take the easy camp because the golem just spawned. And here we go. There's the bulb that will clear up the easy camps in the top lane. And SK are like, yeah, no. We don't want to fight this while there is a golem up. They're just going to wait for their own golem to grow. And Ralph is going to take that right now. MY just going to... Sorry, SK just going to hang around in the mid lane. Clear out the wave. And wait for their golem to arrive before they do anything risky like moving in with their own golem. Speaking of doing stuff risky, um, MYI is leaving open a lot of seats, or rather, it's leaving behind a lot of seats. You really want to pick them up, don't give them to your opponent, because, well, in this case it doesn't really matter though, but... Because uh, SK only has three, goal uh, three seats, and oh, this is good, this is really good for my insanity. They have 115 seats in the bank, which means that the moment the plant golem goes down, after the respawn timer, they're going to be able to pull out yet another one of these plant golems, so that's pretty big. But yeah, for but now, we are about to see a team fight right now. Both teams dancing around each other, and I really like what Shinobu's doing here. Just dropping the Hunter Killers, the Mutilus can keep up with the plant golem, which is seriously working it down, which means that even though Raul grabbed his golem second, it's already at much lower health than Araragi's due to just a bit of superior play there by Araragi and MYI here. And now MYI have got SK pushed all the way back to the base, which is a bit of a home field advantage for them, but they need to take down that bulb and not get polymorphed if they're to win this fight. That's for certain. Only uh, 18 seconds remain on Araragi, so I expect him to go all in soon. And, uh... I think so. Everyone is here. Yeah, they, they really do want do it. He was, Araki was rooted there. This is a very risky situation here. Both teams just dancing around them. They may just be waiting for level 20 here, which is coming up soon. But if SK will hit it first, there's a transformation. Oh, Rocky managing to dodge the curse here. And Raul chasing back in with what he has left of that plant terror health. There's a decision strike. It's pretty much everyone. And this fight is going well. Shinobu had to pop his, uh, his uh, what, number one there, his uh, incubate. And this is actually looking really good 
I can't tell who's winning here. I think it's going to be SK because Arag is going to go down. There was no devouring maw whatsoever from the looks of it. Raw goes down. Tyrael is going to deal a lot of damage when he explodes. Wow, that was a lot of damage as Uzer goes down. Lao Wall. Lao has been slowed thanks to Zarmany. Lao, you need to carry this. No, there's the snipe. And if Lao, if Link and Zarmany had stuck around, that might have been a different story. But because uh, they both backed up and just kited Oof. Lao back, Lao goes down. Nice bolt of the storm done. there. They hit level 20. Bolt of the storm taken by Zarmany, able to blink forward and pick off Lao. That was a close fight. But because they just four straight, as I did it in that fight, and just backed up, waited patiently for their abilities to come back on, and then just instantly turned, Lao had Again, no chance. Look at Zagara, look at, Il look at uh, Illidan. Neither of them was able to pop their ultimate. Actually, yep. Illidan's... Yeah, Illidan's... Uh, uh, actually, it's down. a bug. In the, there, there is a bug. There's actually no way to tell if Illidan uses his ult because the cooldown doesn't actually work in replays ah. or in observer mode. Okay, so Zagara didn't get her uh, ult off. That's the issue. Yes, there was no position strike. But, however, she is going to be able to delay what is left and kill off this hard camp of SK because, like you said earlier, they had extra Our seeds in the bank, so they're been... able to bring out the plant terror straight away, which is going to slow down SK. They're not going to be able to gain the full map. It's even control. going to hurt because SK they... because the there's no camps for them to take now. Exactly. Remember. There's kill no the camps, chambers. and they, can ju they have a plant golem. They have the exact same level, so they're just as powerful. They can just shove down this middle lane. They yeah, have a full health... Uh, Plan Terror, and they have 1 minute and 30 seconds to do so. And not only that, if MYI so desires, they could also just go straight for the Shamblers once again. This is true. Both teams are level 20. We've seen double resurgence coming out from MYI here, just to give them a bit more control on this map. But here we go. They are pushing a lot stronger than they were last time. BZ does get polymorphed there. Need to be careful. BKP just holding down the front line here. There's the bow. Neither team wanting to fully commit here. A lot of damage has been done to that keep, but MYI finally just going to let this one go. Going to throw down a curse behind them and begin heading up to those shamblers. Whereas SK pretty much going to do the same. They're like, yeah, we don't want to fight this while the uh, terror is up. We're just going to go bot lane and grab the you know, shamblers down there. I've been doing some calculations. And oh, really? That's dangerous. No, Shinobu's doing the exact right thing here. He's going to just run straight towards the keep, drop a bulb. When nobody's around, get a lot of damage in. And right after... Oh, now he has no escape. That's... Okay, he that's... Does have a, he does have escape. He is using his sprint ability, so he is a bit faster. Wh okay, uh, while so to get back so to the calculations, um, both of the sides on the map have 90 seats. At the start of the night, MYI had 15, and SK had 2. So even if SK takes down the entire bottom it's half... 100. Yeah, exactly. 90 plus 15 is 105. Guys, you don't even have to watch Dora the Explorer, just watch Techno the Caster. That's... Oh! Um... Jinobu just popped his ult. Really? Yeah, he popped it here. I don't see it. Th it's gone. Oh yeah, that's the issue with Devouring Maw, but... Yeah, it's... it's... it's been used. It's uh -oh. on cooldown. Rut row, Raggy. Rut row! That's an ult now? They, well, they it's, it's an ult he has Oh, no. It's an ult he hasn't been using in, uh, like, the last five fights, so... I think he might have actually just been using it because he's not going to need it, because he's about to take the plant terror again. At the moment, he's dancing around that area. Both yeah. teams, once again, just giving each other their space, dealing with what they have. And at the moment, MYI appear to be winning the objective battle, but SK are still staying ahead in terms of levels. They're bo both teams... Just grabbing all the camps they can. Ah, oh, too slow, SK. Not able to get to that easy camp before the terror was taken. Very nice so, there by Shinobi. Another terror now going down. This time there are siege golems in the mid lane. There are in fact siege golems in the mid lane. They will be taken down though by the rest of MYI. Whereas the terror are just going to head to the bot lane, clear up the hard camp for SK, and let and MYI will let their own siege giants push mid so, and bot. I, I really like what MYI is doing here right now because they took the. The camps, which means that they have uh, pushing power in all the lanes right now. There's actually a lane growing in the top lane. But they have the Siege Giants in, in both the bottom and the top, uh, both the bottom and the middle lane, which will allow them to put down so much pressure on this keep that it will break under the pressure. I mean, yeah. yeah this keep is 100% yeah, gone. Shinobu will be able to take that down with one more hit. And this easy cap is now just 
pretty much there for the pressure just to hold off the wave and now if it might want to they could either rotate to the bot lane with their easy cam which looks like what they're gonna do or they could head top lane and let the easy cam deal with it but no bot lane is what they choose and they will begin wailing on this it's way easier for moi to just do this they have 50 seconds on their plant golem they should be able to take out at least the turrets get themselves a lot of move mobility here as uh, the walls go down the gate goes down shinobu he's going to go in he pops his seat doesn't quite get anyone in it so for now they're dealing a lot of damage to the keep. Can they actually take down the keep? At the very least, they take down one of the healing fountains, which is already a big success. The keep down to 20% hit points. We're looking at it in the top left so uh, corner of the screen. Can Shinobu take it down? The moment Shinobu falls, as the plant golem, that's the moment where the, where the team fight is going to happen. So Shinobu immediately falling back. Precision strike on the golem. And I think this is over in SK. Bit early from SK there. The curse actually hits two members here, and that's three members down. SK holding their lead for so long, but MYI with the patient play, the control of the seeds are now trying to go for it. The devouring lord did just go down onto BKB, just trying to keep him busy, and he is dropping very quickly. Needs to get into the hold of the storms. Lau is on the core. What is going on? But he can't break through the shield. BKB getting out alive. Throws down the root, and now it's up to Zarbani and Beezy to try and take down Aragi, but he gets out alive. MYI or not able to win the game here, but here. now they have full oh, control of the game. Nova actually oh, with the bolt mind. storm onto Nova Aragi. Oh! <laughs> the sword! The sword! The Elduins might teleport. Incredible there by Aragi. Able to escape from Nova. Hot shots. There's a disadvantage hey, found of a hot seed. shots for you. <laughs> <laughs> found a seed on the way. 94 seeds in favor of Lowell! SK, Look at Lowell, how low he is. Yeah, he, I don't know how he was it able to survive, but he did Do manage it. But now, MY having to be out, having to just work out what they need to do. Shinobu going to be able to take quite a few seeds here, but SK finally all respawning. They're going to be able to get their plant terror for the first time in quite a while. Yeah, MYI has been very much on point with those plant terrors, but SK is a little bit unsure right now because they have to be very careful. If they make one wrong move, they're going to lose pretty much their entire base because there's a huge wave in the bottom lane already pushing in. Aragi, he gets caught on, but... He does have Resurgence, so even if he does, does go down here, he will be available for the next he team fight, and he left. does go down. Does pop very quickly, so once that passive pops, he will be back up. Yep, 5-4, he will be up very, very shortly. It's the same with Anubarak. I'm not sure if Anubarak's uh, Resurgence is up or not because I think he died during that last team fight. But SK, it does give them a tiny bit of breathing room, knowing that Araragi no longer has his resurgent. Plant Terror is now growing for SK, but they don't want to fight MYI. MYI, however, they really want to fight. Nice snipe, knocking Lau off his horse there. And uh, Fred's trying to dive in there, but SK just backing up. They don't want to fight yet, but here we go. Finally turning around now that a lot of the engage has been used from MYI here. BKB just holding down the front line here. Raul. Just winning there, but oh, instantly Lau goes on to Rob. There's a divine storm by Ace of Spades, and this isn't looking good. This isn't looking good for MYI though. They're very low. Nice devouring more though. That could be what brings it back for them. BKB has popped to use their main tank, but SK are pushing through, and most of MYI are popping. Kerrigan, the first one to go down, except for uh, Arthur's, but Arthur's was back thanks to Resurgence, and Lau is still doing the damage though, Zarbany, be careful Zarbany, Zarbany takes down Illidan there, and Shinobu trying desperately to get out, Ace of Spades looks like he might almost steal, he does actually steal it, he was able to steal the hard cap there, and now it is just Shinobu getting out of there alive, Fred on full health, he does not mind, he is fine, Shinobu moving back towards the enemy there, but does not want to, SK wins that fight, in yes. fairly convincing fashion, and now they're going to try and get the counter damage back onto MYI. This is the closest game I have ever cast so far. I have to agree, the, uh, the kills are pretty much uh, in favor of SK. The ad experience advantage for is also for SK, but they're at the same level, and for now, it's up to Shinobu and Fred to just defend against the planned terror. Now, all they have to do is not lose two keeps, and then they are still in the race. If they lose three, it's all over. 12 seconds on, on Illidan. Tyrael has rejoined the battle. Tyrael actually jumping in. Has the judgment available, I believe. Zarmany taking way too much damage here. Goes down to about 10% uh, hit points. One more hit, that's all it takes. And Zarmany, that's a Nova, if I'm not mistaken. So if the plant golem pops, so does Nova. Uh, Nova would have bolted the storm, so she Routine's might, in fact, be able to escape here. Attack. And SK... 
have just backed out here. They were looking to possibly go for that uh, that other Shambler, but their core is a bit under siege from the fact they have lost two keeps. Whereas MYI, their mid keep is slightly damaged, but the rest of their keeps are in pretty good shape. The top lane one is fairly exposed, but now because SK have had to pull back because they don't want to be backdoored, basically, MYI are once again taking control of the map, grabbing both the Shamblers here, and because of that, they're going to get their hands on another Plant Terror. Well, they have to be a little bit careful here because BKB is on Araragi, has rooted Araragi, Rawl has joined the fight as well, so they have to fall back from the top, from the bottom golem, but uh, only for so long. Actually, is top golem going to be enough? Yeah, they're going to get their own plant golem, and SK isn't, so this might be the decisive battle for MYI. They have to win this team fight. I think lose. so. They will have the Plant Terror in this team fight. And SK, once again, still slightly ahead, but this is how the game has been for quite a while now. With MYI slightly ahead in objectives. As we can see, both bot and uh, mid lane still pushing really heavily for MYI. Whereas SK slightly ahead in levels and kills. It's down to team play oh. of MYI. SK might be going for this keep here, but to they're going to go for it. They will go for it and then likely be out to go and defend. Diving onto it straight away. We're seeing Overdrive and Rewind being popped by... Oh, they're going for it! They're going for the core! It's the base race! It's a base... Well, it's not really a base race if you're falling it's back. A... Everybody's coming back in. One Devouring Maw. That's all it takes. Core down to 35%. Is it going it's to be enough to Devouring Maw? Is it going to be SK? SK still alive. And it's a core going down. 1%. One more hit. And it's SK Gaming with the base race. <laughs> What? Oh, that was amazing. MYI ventured a bit too far. The damage, though. Wow. That SK comp. It was just like, okay, they're in the mid lane. That's enough time. And they just instantly crashed through everything, popped all their abilities onto that core. And even the entire might of MYI was not enough to stop the unstoppable force that was SK there. Really well played. That was an incredible way to bring it back, even without their plant terror. If they had gone back to defend, I think they would have lost a bit too much there and started to fall behind. That was an amazing decision. Did you die? Of course, it doesn't work. I was going to. I was saying how I didn't expect the core to be so squishy, and then I muted myself. Good job, Techno. You, you are well fair. done. Well, well done. done. Ten out of ten. Ten out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Cores of this game aren't actually incredibly tanky as it is. They're pretty good if you're like two or three people in, but when you have the entire might of a team with all of their ultimates and no one defending it, yeah, you're gonna crush through it. That's for for sure, and I, I still have to say, wow, wow, I, I still can't believe what just happened. I still cannot believe what happened. Poof, mind blown. Yeah, incredible. But for now, that does bring the score up to 1-1, one, one, and I think we should head to a very quick break while we set up the next lobby and the next draft, and so that I can go grab a drink because I finished my water, because Garden of Terror games are pretty long. Yeah, and, and as everybody knows, you always need to water your garden. So, for now, we are going to be jumping into a quick music break. And after that, we will return with game number three, SK versus My Insanity. Wow, what a match.
All right, Thatcher. Off the last game. <laughs> Can they top it off in game number three? I wonder. But for now, we are heading into the draft mode, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, yeah. Mine Sansi is ready. And that means that we'll be jumping into set draft mode. Thatcher, are you ready to rock and roll? I am always ready to rock and roll, except when you start the stream when I am not here. This time I was here, though. We're currently Ooh. waiting for Gaming's representative to jump into our wonderful draft picking thing. And then we can begin the draft. Well, that's just going to take a little bit longer, but uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very curious what they are going to be banning out, because Illidan has been picked every game on Mind Sanity. And on SK, well, SK has just been rolling with the punches, I guess. Yep, and we did the last game see... SK make an incredibly good decision. We even saw in the chat just now in game, uh, MY just congratulating SK. Just like that was a really good call. We did not see that coming. That was the best move you could have done. So we're seeing a lot of mutual respect for both these teams right now. Yeah, and I mean, if these two are the best that Europe has to offer, then European teams have to step up their game. They have to go beyond my insanity, beyond SK, because they, they are already the best, which means that the rest just is looking up, well, those SK and my insanity guys, can we catch them? There's only one answer to that, and that is maybe. It's true. Uh, both these teams have only lost games, excluding like games with DCs and all that. They've only lost maps, even to one other team in Europe in the tournaments that me and you have cast, and that is Fast Forward. Yeah, Fast Forward is a team that we aren't seeing in this tournament though, but uh, Fast Forward is also a fast-growing team that is getting ready to, um, well, battle it out against SK and my insanity. And from, from my perspective, if I'm looking at the battles um, that do not involve one of these three teams, then, well, yeah, well, I need to rephrase this. I need to rephrase this. In Europe, from what I can see, you have several tiers, and I would say this is S tier, as for SK Gaming. My insanity. Nope. There's an S in insanity. <laughs> I'll let you have it. <laughs> and there's an S in fast forward. It's the S tier. <laughs> okay, the super tier. Let's call it that. And and then under that, you have a lot of teams that are. Also really good, but they can't they can't get to SK or my insanity or fast forward yeah. yet. I put a I put a, that tier we'll call that tier A. I'd say that would probably be playing with pain is pain, I do hard hots, mouse sports, etc. Yeah, everybody who's in the league. So I'm, I'm expecting <laughs> SK and my insanity to finish first and second in the league, but that's at this point. That's right now. That's that's what we're talking about right now. And speaking of talking about right now. We are heading into the uh, the draft phase. The draft. Yep, and it is SK who are going to get the first ban and the first pick. So let's see what they do bring out. So again, Tychus and Uz uh, Tychus and uh, Stitches. Stitches. Yeah, has to be. Yep. I expect so. And you only get one ban. Those are pretty preferable bans. But we've both we've seen both these teams actually use certain heroes to very high effect. It's possible that we could see a, f a targeted Illidan ban? Yeah, but then they have to give up Tychus. Or do uh, they? No, they don't. If SK ban it from M ban Illidan from MYI, then MYI would have to ban Tychus to stop Illid to stop uh, SK from getting it, which means SK would have Stitches or something like that available. Other option is ban out Uther and then pick up Stitches or Tychus. If they're Very, possible. Than. Very possible. Ufa is a good band, but both teams have used Ufa here, so we're not seeing, we're not going to see a huge. Uh, Ufa's not going to be a huge loss. Tassadar's Tassadar. the first ban. <laughs> Very solid. We've seen him in, in every game so far. Banning him out may throw uh, MY off their game a little bit. Yeah, might throw them for a loop, but that means that Stitches and Tigers are open. I think Tigers will be the next ban, just just to play it safe. Yeah, but that gives stitches to the other team. Although, then you get Uther Artist, and that's also a very, very strong combination. This is true. This is very true. Let's see. It's stitches. That leaves so, Tychus open. If SK don't pick Tychus right now, I will eat my water bottle. Not the water in it. I will eat the bottle and cannot... leave the water standing just due to surface tension. Science. That's not how it <laughs> works, Thatcher. 
That's <laughs> it not how it I works. Say how it works. It's not how any of this works. Yeah. It's how it works if I say that's how it works. But Tychus all one hundred. Oh, that's the thing. Uther or Tychus? Who do they yeah. want priority? Uther, hands down. Say... Uther has been in every. Uh... Uther is so important to most of these scene compositions due to the mm. amount of healing that he can do by just aiming at someone. I'm going to say Tychus. I'm, I'm going to say, say Uther. Rather have Ty I'm going to say that I think SK will rather pick up Tychus and they'll just leave Uther for Ace of Spades. And then Uther goes over to my insanity together with Arsus. That's a very, very risky play. It's a risky play, but... I don't like it. I, I, mm. I am pretty sure it's going to be Uther. If they have given that, uh, given that up, though... They may give away Ufa, but that means they will have both Tychus and Rhaegar if they want to go for Ancestral Healing to keep Tychus alive longer, or Bloodlust to go for that what? damage, but no, they're taking Arthas, just completely Okay, unreadable. I'm done, just I'm done. them Ufa Tychus. S stream is off, bye. <laughs> yeah, Ufa Tychus, hands down. Yeah, just, to, just like, you know what, yep, fine, we'll take this, let you have those, and we're going to have to see counter picks. Altavert, that's one of the quickest picks we've ever had in this draft phase. Yep, there yep, we go. Yep, instant, yep, yep, yep. instant from MYI. We're going to have to see counter picks out of SK here. We have to. What what they, what can they pick up against the Tychus? And the new thing? Uh, Brightwing. Well, Tyrael. Brightwing, Tyrael. Quite a, few, quite a few people with CC. Brightwing isn't all that good against the Tychus. Yeah, uh, Brightwing can polymorph a Odin. Point taken. <laughs> Not the best counter, but considering how what supports have been taken and banned, pretty much your only option when it comes to support. Or, or well, there's Rhaegar as well. There's Rhaegar as well. Yeah, they can I think Rhaegar is going to be their selection, but they need... I'm expecting we're going to see a bit more of a burst team from uh, SK here, just to work their way through this. We're taking a long time picking here. I get the feeling that someone might be shouting at BKB, just like, You gave them what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, probably. Um, he's probably going to be sent over to the Burger King to get him uh, get his team some burgers afterwards. He's a chef. He can or works at well, he works at a restaurant. He can cook them the food. Yeah, true enough. True enough. Mm -hmm. Some bar some uh, barbecue king burritos for them. Barbecue king burritos. Wow. Yep. Nova, Nova? Said, looking for a that's going to be their roaming comp unless uh, they have someone else to roam with Arthur's. But uh, the whole idea Zertal? of this comp is going to be picking people off. What's the map actually? Let me. Uh, Black Hearts Bay. Ooh. So a Zeratul would why. fit in. That might be why they gave it up so much. Nova's very good on this map for starters. Arthur's still good for the ganks and they're the Zeril, yeah. This uh... is an engage comp. It's okay. Our opponents got some coins. We're going to take them back now. And it's going to be all about just finding someone, just like, okay, Tychus has this many coins. These now are he coins doesn't. Now. Yeah, these are our coins now. <laughs> this is a comp that looks at the moment, if they had stitches in, it would be perfect. It would be a comp about taking coins from their opponents. And for their final two picks, I'd say I'm expecting, maybe... I'm expecting my insanity to pick up Rhaegar first. And... Uh, I don't think my insanity will pick up Rhaegar because they already have Ufra as a support. I think it's more likely to be a Nubarak and someone else. I'm not sure. A Nubarak and Rhaegar. I think Diablo. Then it won't be Rhaegar. It has to be Rhaegar. It can't be Rhaegar. Why, Why can't do they it have be... two supports? What's what's wrong with two supports? Nothing wrong with it, but it has a much lower win ratio than Double Warrior or Double Assassin if we look at the previous tournament statistics. Yeah, but these guys have already shown that statistics mean nothing. I think it's too much of a risky play, and I'm almost positive they won't go with it. If they do go for Rhaegar, I'll give you all the props you deserve. But there's an Uberak, and I think it'll be Diablo or maybe even Chen as their final pick here. Or they will go for their their second assassin now, rather than their second warrior and just leave MYI. In fact, they'll probably definitely go for their second assassin because uh, SK already have their two warriors, so they're not going to steal another one away from MYI. So uh, I think this will be a Falset or a Reyna, maybe even a Valor. Mm. Reyna would work wonders with Odin, though. This is true. Reyna, Reyna and the Odin locusts. would be nice. Yeah, oh, yeah, buff the locusts. That would or be funny. Zagara. Zagara. Oh, yes, I completely forgot about that. A very solid pick. Very decent for just poking out the enemy. Fine. There's a lot of uh, smoke fields on this map, which just obscure vision, basically the equivalent of brushes in other games. They Zagara are very good for scouting those out and giving vision. Also, leaving creep around the turret area, incredibly useful. So, Zagara's a Although, very solid prediction SK there. SK hasn't cool. really played Zagara, so I'm pretty sure they're going to save Zagara for the last pick, so... Well, it's MYI's pick right now. 
Yeah, exactly. So SK can't won't be playing Zagara. That that's, well, that's, for what, certain. that's what we're saying. It's uh, more like the MYI will be picking it up. Yeah, yeah, but that's the final. Oh, Illidan. Well, Illidan, very solid. I we may even see a hunt Illidan. On just the... to pick people off. Mm. I don't think it's likely. I think that in this possible. composition, they really want the Zagara to fill it up. So I, I, I'm locking it in. Final pick for my insanity is going to be Zagara. Unless SK um, takes it away. I think the final pick for my insanity will be either Diablo or Chen. I think Diablo is more likely. So that's my final lock in Diablo for my insanity. Whereas SK, they have a double pick here. They're missing a support. So that will be the Rhaegar, Rhaegar likely yep. for them. And their final pick for them... What else do they need? Rainer. No assassin, Faust Adol, Rainer, or, or Valor. I'm Zeratul. thinking... I don't think Zeratul's good against this comp. Yeah, but it's, so it's more I, about uh, the map. It, the map is... It, it's really easy for Zeratul think, to get away. And to I know, get... but I still think... Brightwing, yep, yeah, very... Solid pick. Rhaegar a bit more meta, as we could describe. But Brightwing, as we pointed out earlier, very good at polymorphing the Odin. I should have stuck with my gut there. And the last pick, I'm expecting probably a Falstad. If you're going Brightwing, Falstad is a yeah, really Falstad, solid pick right from Assassin. Yeah. If you're yeah. going Brightwing, then it has to be Falstad. And at least open Zagara for my insanity. Yep, there's quite a few Mercs on this camp as well. So it just gives that bit of extra mobility. So I think that's a solid pick. Very solid pick there from SK. And I'm almost positive Falstad will be the fill-up. But we've been proved wrong several times today. But seriously, someone needs to look into, look into target banning Illidan from MYI. Yeah, but what are you going to... If you ban out Illidan, then they ban out Tassadar, and, or rather they ban out Stitches, so you can only pick Tassadar, Artis, or Uther, or Tychus. That's oh. true. But yeah, SK taking a lot of time thinking about their final pick here, down to the last 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they do. There we go. Vala! Vala. Hmm, interesting choice. I haven't seen Vala in quite a while, though, but uh, in, the third, in, in the third game, they finally break out the Vala here, over the Falstads, over the uh, Raynor, and Vala has been classified as a B-tier uh, uh, assassin. That's true. She's not the highest tier there is, but it's going to throw my insanity for a bit of a loop here, and Vala does have the mobility to dodge out the way of people like this Anubarak, like the Rainer Grenades, like the Ufa stuns, she can get out of there and still low throw down all her abilities and her auto attacks. It's depending on, though, with this very high CC comp from my insanity, whether Valor is going to go for the auto attack build, which is preferable for people on ladder and most of the pros, or whether she'll go with what we saw a bit yesterday and go for the more ability based Valor build so she can stay at range, not have to worry so much, and just poke forever. Right, so mine sounds the final pick. Diablo or Zagara? Techno calls Zagara. Tetra call calls Diablo. Diablo. And we're both wrong. I'm not we sure. We haven't found out yet. <laughs> it's still taking some time. Time left. Four seconds. Damn it! <laughs> Why do I never trust myself? <laughs> wow, okay. I just don't trust myself, apparently. Well, nobody I'm should... Not Nobody should ch uh, trust you anyhow, so... Wow, rude. <laughs> Ooh, BM, BM. Ooh, he's only gone BM dip, but yay, it's a Chen pick! I'm happy every I'm happy either way. And it's Jackie it's Chen! It's, it's Jackie Chen. And I would like to point out that uh, the Chen will be coming down on Araragi, I'm pretty sure. And it's Araragi who I basically learned my ladder Chen build from. So it's nice to see him playing Chen. He doesn't have the master skin that I have, though. He is not a master Chen. I am master Chen. If I have one, let me look quickly. <laughs> yeah, his Chen's level 4. <laughs> he doesn't even have the 500 gold from it yet. Well, at the very least, we do have a Toothless in the game. We do. We have the... Uh, we have the... That's the third uh, skin tint of Brightwing. Very nice skin tint. I like it. How do you also... How do you get those skin tints again? Leveling. You level up. Ah. Yeah. They're free skin tints that you get for leveling up. And uh, nice. we're waiting for one more player. BKB. Who are waiting for? Is it BKB? It's BKB. Reported. Oh, yeah. Reported oh. for AFK. BKB. Come on, man. No, he's, he's, <laughs> he's rewriting his name to BRB. B <laughs> BRB. I, we have to ask him why his name is this. At some point. <laughs> there, there, it has to have something. It has to. Yeah. Anyhow, we are getting into game, so I can actually switch to the in-game in three, two, one, zero. And they've been beamed up. 
Uh, <laughs> yes, beat the me up, Scuffy. Like, Wait, they're having what map again? <laughs> the game was confused, just like, we're not used to this. But we are loading in to the Black Hearts Bay, and this is the final game between SK and MYI. Winner of this will take first place in the, the rankings. Heroes Premier League. League? I was about to say bracket, but it's a league. It's a league in the rankings of the Heroes Premier League. For those who are not familiar with Black Hearts Bay, it's pretty simple. Collect some go coins, hand them into the uh, pirate in the middle of the of the map, and then he will bombard your enemies. Well, that's pretty simple. Simple map, simple rules. Winner wins, loser loses. Very much so. So we have MYI on the left-hand side. We have SK on the right-hand side. Both teams going with slightly out of the ordinary team comps with a Chen pickup and a uh, Vala pickup. Slightly out of the ordinary. Very I'm interesting to see how this goes down. And the one seconds. thing I'd like to point out is uh, SK's team Five, looking a little four, squishy on the assassin three, front there. Two, well, so Notice be it. Action. So be it. Five man push from the team of Mind Sanity towards the. Uh, towards the observatory, where SSK is only bringing in four, so that's a very, very bad move by SK. Well, actually SK a smart move, because they get some experience in the bot lane. Yep, that's exactly how they're going to do it. Just going to play it safe, hover around this area, just in case uh, MY did not come. MY do have the vision of this area now, and SK just dancing around the outside of that vision circle. Brightwing, just carefully scouting. And Aragi has already made it down to the bot lane in time to get the XP from it. And now we're going to see Aragi's Chen in action, whereas MYI, pretty much all of the top plate, just grabbing XP from there, which is going to give um, SK a little bit of an advantage as they are hovering in this mid lane, trying to get the XP, but not enough to keep them ahead due to the fact that MYI have all rotated down here. Yep, it's time for the treasure chests and uh, all the coins going over to MYI, and it looks like they're immediately going to be handing those in. Yep, MYI playing a bit too fast here. For SK to really keep up with R. Rogi just out duels Raul there, able to chase him back and is continuing to out damage Raul. In comes BKB to try and gank R. Rogi. R. Rogi just completely dodging out the way and he is outplaying Raul here very nicely here, but now he's in a bit of a pickle. He is surrounded by enemies, able to kick past Raul, but does get picked off. It was a bit too greedy there. Actually, what he was doing was perfect because it allowed the team of MYI to actually get a full hand in if they so desire, because they now have all the coins in the map, and SK has zero. And that's a very big lead that they have, if they... This so might change, though... Uh, no, deep tunneling, actually. Taking a lot of damage, he's dropped low, but he's able to get out. Very nice there, but this does mean that SK will be able to pick up those two coins, the only two coins they have, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, better, better some coins than no coins. But uh, in top lane, Ace of Space fight fighting against Lynx, and you were talking about how Brightwing is able to always out-sustain Uther due to the passive of Brightwing. Yeah, Brightwing's heal is a passive as opposed to Uther's, which costs mana. And we're currently seeing both teams neither really dive diving for the turn in yet. They're just going around the map, taking control of the mercenaries first, waiting for a bit later, I believe, for when it feels just a bit more advantageous to take those mercenaries. Raul just scouting out the bottom hard camp for now. And it's now just going to go help his team with the easy camp while Aragi clears the bottom lane. Whereas in the mid lane, Zarmany is just chasing Ace of Spades out of that watchtower as she does take it. Smart move here by SK, getting a little bit of an experience advantage due to their nice positioning of the heroes. And uh, that's also something you have to keep in mind on this, on pretty much every map in heroes. See, if you want to get experience, you have to have heroes in every single lane, lane at the times that it's needed. If there are no minions, then you shouldn't be there. But Shinobu now, moving towards the middle, picks up the, the uh, observatory and, well, it just exchanges hands for a little bit. I, I like how this is uh, playing out already in the top lane. This is true, and right now we're seeing SK moving towards the turn-in. They're going to try and turn in their six coins here. MYI hanging around the area right now. They were looking possibly for someone to roam down. Not sure what they were hanging around for. But they're now moving a bit further forward. Going to try and meet up with Araki, see if they can catch out Ral here. Another big thing here is that the... Uh, big golems are now pushing down in the bottom lane. Actually, the hand in from Lowell and from Free, uh, from Fred, Fredzu, Fredzu, 
Just Freds. Freds. Uh, that's going to be more than enough to uh, start the first barrage of these cannons. So we're going to be seeing we what the objective of the map is, and that's hand coins, and then sh suddenly it starts shooting. Yeah, but Zarni now, as well as BZ, need to hang back a bit because those explosions will actually do damage to the players if they are caught in the radius. But here we go. SK is going to try and do an engagement here. Brightwing has teleported down, but SK, the MYI already just backed up. They're completely fine. Yeah, they see Brightwing coming in, back away, and they know we don't have to fight here. We can just sit back and relax as all those forts are getting, at least as one of the forts gets taken down. And that gives a huge experience lead now over to the team of MYI. And this is also something that maybe is how MYI rolls. They, they lose a little bit early and then slowly but surely pull it back. And it's a strategy that SK hasn't really been able to combat, but we're on Blackheart's Bay, and BKB actually has four coins in his possession, which means that there's now going to be a counter-offensive by the Pirates. Yeah, teams Let's currently taking it in enemy. turns to get the Pirates, whereas the MYI, just letting it happen, they're instead going to take this bottom hard cap. The only person who could contest us here is Raal, and he wants nothing to do with it. He's just gonna road, hover around here and wait for the chest to spawn, which I believe they do in fact soon. Raal now knows that this camp has been taken, as it did appear, in the meantime, everyone appears to just be hovering around lanes, getting XP, and SK refusing to fight here because MYI have their ultimates. Yeah, MYI getting that advantage due to the fort. However, now finally SK, because they were able to hand in everything, have also gained access to their heroic ability. A 10-coin hand in here by MYI. SK is a little bit too late to uh, stop this one from handing in. Yep, Zarmany did come down here to try and dispute this. But now, they're going for the chest, and we're going to see a fight over the chest. Ah, oh, Ragi just diving in. Not caring, gets stunned by the Raid of Vengeance. Sinister Strike being dropped down onto Lau. Chen has taken the barrel hole, just completely eliminating Ralph from the fight. But Ralph teleports back in using Elderwind, and that was a really good fight for SK. Seriously doing massive damage to MYI, taking out three heroes there. Yeah, this is the kind of the issue when you're dealing with a Brightwing, and... Brightwing teleported in, turned the fight into a 5 versus 4 in favor of SK, and SK just capitalized on the numbers advantage that they got from that one. So, yeah, if you're dealing with a Brightwing, you need to have your support in position before the fight starts, not after Brightwing starts teleporting. Very much so. And now, SK, for the first time in this game, have got themselves a lead. Their team appears to be a bit more efficient in the team fight than MYI were. They were just very good there. And Chen, he did actually do a good job. He tried to CC Raal on the Tyrael out of that fight. But Raal just immediately Elder Wind Smite and teleported onto the other side of that barrel, rendering it completely mute. This is also going to be an interesting here. In the top lane, the fight has broken out, but Chen is nowhere to be seen. Chen is on the bottom side of the map, and that is costing MYI. And we're seeing exactly the same thing that cost MYI their lead earlier on, indecisiveness. They, they, they are not fast enough, they do not decide fast enough that they're going to be fighting that Grave Golem. You saw half of the team already in position to fight, and then, um, I believe it was, who's name? Aragi still had to walk all the way from the bottom lane up to the top lane. And then you're too late, and this is what happens. I believe a full hand in. Yeah, that is uh, a full hand in plus two. So they keep a two extra coins busy, not learning how to count from Dora. Still continues to turn in despite the fact that the pirate was already full. So that's going to be another fort going over to SK Gaming and going to give them another level advantage up to two levels. It's going to be very hard for my sense to actually pull this one back, especially since they picked Chen over Zagara here. They don't really have that Haymaker ultimate. Um, okay, they have the um, they have the barrel coming out of Chen, but they don't have the lockup that uh, Zagara's ultimate brings in three uh, champions that they can uh, three I heroes. I still prefer the Chen pick to Zagara because otherwise they would have almost no tankiness. And Chen is providing a lot of tankiness to this team and a lot of engage potential thanks to his kick. Especially when he hits level 16 and he gains the root kick. Oh no, wait, that's level that's level 7 talent. He does have the talent that allows him to root enemies. So very good for chasing and for when they do engage more efficiently than that team fight was there. Yeah, but I still, I still feel that Zagara's ultimate 
would have turned the fight there pretty much, just like uh, Zeratul's ultimate with the Void Prison. But that's yeah. just my, my... I think Zeratul's just too low a tier at the moment. He, he might have been a good choice, but he's just too low a tier to take the risk at the moment. At the very least, they do get their full hand in, and so my insanity gets themselves probably uh, the fort here. Yeah, the fort's going down in one go. Yeah, if there's towers, then the fort survives. If there's no towers, or if there's no uh, first set of towers, then the fort... Actually, a fight breaking out, Rog gets caught out, and Bridewing is already dead. Oh my god, that reign of vengeance. That's such a good disengage by SK here. However, they're retreating to the wrong place here. Ral is going to get caught out here. Does use displacement in his uh, smite there, but does get picked off. He was trying to retreat to the fort that was no longer there, thanks to the cannon. Bit of a mistake there by Ral, but the rest of uh, SK, except for Brightwing, not sure what happened to her. Just got blown up. Able to, indeed. The rest of SK were able to back out, thanks to a very, very nice reign of vengeance there by BZ. But... That is still two kills for MYI, which does bring them back into the game a bit. Yep. At the start of the fight, the Fairy Dragon was turned into Fairy Dust, and that, that pretty much showed how powerful the pick capabilities of MYI are. However, they did use a lot of ultimates just to kill Brightwing, and there's another thing you have to consider here. There are two ultimates in uh, the hands of MYI that are over time. We're looking at the Odin, and we're looking at the transformation from... Uh, sorry, three actually. You have the Asmodean ult, uh, Anubarak ult, sorry. Uh, you have the uh, Illidan ult, the barrel. I don't really call that as a over time ultimate. But you do have two transformations and a lot of damage over time. Actually a fight breaking out here at the heart camp. Nice judgment, completely cancelling out the overdrive. There's the Odin, but the Odin already pretty much out. Oh, Rogi is just shielding his entire team here, thanks to his passive brew gaining ability. And here we go, it looks like... Yes, MYI do take the hard cap, and down goes the majority of the rest of SK here. SK is starting to lose this fight. Both teams have lost one player each, but SK have no health compared to MYI. And that fight... Oh, BZ should not have gone back in there. That was a mistake, and oh, Rogi takes him down. And that fight was almost... Oh! Nice counter kill there by SK. But incredibly well played. And the majority of that fight was down to Araragi. SK dropped all their damage there. But Araragi has taken the talent known as enough to share. And Chen's passive is he presses D. He uh, stops himself doing anything for a second while he gains a shield and gains brew. Which is his version of mana. With enough to share, not only does he give himself a very powerful shield, he gives his teammates a shield, which means almost all of that damage and sustain that came out from SK there was rendered mute by Aragi, giving his entire team that much sustain as well. Also, uh, Fred now handing in 9 coins, plus the 8 coins from Aragi. Me uh, my insanity suddenly back in the game. I, I have to say, these guys, they were pretty much out of the game, and then this team fight completely turned it around. Another thing I'd like to uh, point out, not only the shield, but it was also Tychus. Tychus was fully spun up, and he was just dealing damage. He was left alone while in the middle of the entire team of SK, and that meant he was putting out so much damage that SK could never come back in. And yes, at the end he did go down, but that was after he already killed everyone off SK. Yeah, but very, very well played at the moment. The so, MY put themselves a bit back into the lead here, and SK moving as a five man gang squad at the moment, trying to find what is it, the remainder of MY, seeing if any of them are hanging around this area, but they're too late. MY have already rotated up to their hard camp. Smart move here by MYI, just picking up that hard camp. They have uh, 10 coins, 12 coins in their possession right now. Yeah, 12 coins in their possession. And they are moving towards the Grave Golem. They decide to to give up their bottom fort, but pick up a Grave Golem instead, which is going to put so much pressure on the map that they should be able to hand in yet another uh, load of coins to the pirate. I would agree. This is very possible. While the Golem is being taken in the top lane, SK going to try and deal as much damage as possible. I'd like to point out to the people in the chat who are talking about Zeratul. Zeratul is a very good hero, but he's too situational, which lowers his tier. As a hero himself, very high tier, very high damage. But with the majority of comps, and against the majority of comps, he isn't that useful, unless you're in the NA. In which case, he's picked quite a lot. But fortunately, we are in Europe, and we are seeing this match. The match of legends. The match that has been... Tr well... Pretty much the Blizzard servers try to keep the match from the servers just because of the power it generates. And there's a huge oh team fight breaking out. Oh my god. 
That Rain of Vengeance though, only hitting one member of MYI. The slow has been used. We did see the uh, we did see double blood for blood there used onto lap onto uh, Freds to try and slow him down, but wasn't enough to pick him off. And because of this though, SK are gonna get another turn, and then they're all gonna be back and defend against that golem. The golem is already pretty low. It's going to be falling here, but he did take out two of these towers here, plus a little bit of what was left over in that top lane. Uh, for the team of My Insanity though, they still have about 13 coins that they want to hand in, and they have to hand them in right now, because what we've seen so far is every time they keep those coins with them, um, and one of them gets picked off, they lose so much of their advantage that they have. I, I really would suggest just handing them in right now. Just, just hand them in, make sure that you have them, and then be done with it. It looks like they agree with you due to the fact the entirety of MYI is hanging around this turn in area. We're just going to clear their bot lane a bit. They're also hanging around these mercenaries. I'm just going to kill those off, get a couple more coins, which, uh, will that get them enough for the full turn? I don't think it will. I don't, I think they're at 15 right now. 7, 5, 2, uh, 1, that's 15. Well, they're easy camps up in 40 seconds. If they want to wait that long, then yeah, they can first do that. Hand but in. It makes more sense to turn these in so they don't get killed off, but BKB Oh. is now here, as well as the rest of SK, to try and prevent Are they this. In... SK yeah, they're in a couple stealth. coins to hand in themselves. Oh, it's sneaking. They're sneaking. They're trying to turn in. It's time to go. There's the root. Doesn't hit anyone. Odin instantly popped the barrel pop just to eliminate the people from the fight here. There's the Divine Storm. Oh, good lord. There's a precision strike onto the Odin. Odin is popped out. And this is not looking good for SK right now being dropped low. It looks like Typhus will get picked off here, which will even up the fight a little. But there's already two people, three people down for SK, and they're already having to pull back. Yeah, and look at this hand in. That's over 16 coins that they can now hand in if Ace of Space so desires. But, well, top lane has the night camp pushing though. But yeah, something to point out in this fight is that all the transformations were successful. Now, usually what happens when Tychus pops into his Odin is that he takes quite a bit of damage while transforming. In this case, he took zero damage. He was able to pop a few of his abilities. And as after even getting hit with a precision strike, he was still alive. They had to focus him down. But the issue with focusing down a Tychus when there's an Illidan on your back, well... Then you can't focus down the Illidan, and the Illidan will take you down instead. And that's what happened in the last fight. So for now, hard camp being taken by MYI. And MYI in a very, very good position right now. Very much so. They MYI... took down middle fort by uh, middle keep by the way with the uh, with the cannons. Oh nice. So that is uh, all the forts. Yeah, that is all of SK's forts gone and all of MYI's forts gone. Once again, we're seeing a pretty close game. Both teams taking and giving away team fights over and over again. So they're pinging the the hand in point, but they don't have the coins. Actually, Lowell does. Lowell's going in. Very risky play here. They 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 have to fall back. They don't. They really need to hand in these coins first, and then or go for the push here. Yep, Link's time to TP. Link has come down to the bot lane with the bright wing. So they're finally going to kill off this easy camp in the bot lane so that they can try and contest these chests. Or if not the chests, the turn in because they do need to clear their bot lane quite quickly. Whereas MYI, they need to take these chests and turn in as quick as possible before SK can react. But SK already mounted up and on the way. Those locusts will actually slow them down a bit. They demounted BKB and uh, they're still just going to continue pushing bot lane. Whereas... MYI this was the perfect moment. This was the perfect moment for NYI to turn in, but they decide to first go all the way to the top lane. They decide to get the hard camp because they know that there's a keep at the end of that lane that is at half hit points. If those hard camps are going to be pushing, it's actually a top lane. That's a top lane hard camp, right? Uh, yeah, uh, th there yes, are no is. mercs that go into the mid lane on this map. Yes, so with these mercs in hand, that means that actually. Does SK have enough for a hand in? No, they don't. They're actually waiting around the hand in point. But these mercs are going to create a huge push wave together with uh, the minions that are coming in. And then also in the mid lane, there's already a triple catapult coming in for MYI. That's triple catapults, Thatcher. Triple catapult. Triple catapult. All Cat the way. Catapults. Oh, they're just waiting. Oh, this is exactly MYI the same as last just game. Just waiting. This is exactly the chilling. same as well, last they're not, game. They're not backdooring, they're just waiting for the turn. There we go, they're off! Yeah, they're That's off. They were just waiting for the enemy to, they were just waiting for SK to appear on their minimap somewhere, playing it safe, 
They weren't being active. They weren't doing anything risky. They were just waiting for their chance. And there is the full turn in with three coins to spare. They can actually uh, backdoor the uh, core right now. They're going to do it. Yeah, they're going to do the SK strategy. It's the SK. They're going to do it. They're yeah, going to do it. There's no minions with them. It's all going to be down to Hero Ultimates are being popped for seeing the entirety of SKB out. BZ is going to be a bit too slow here. There's the platoon strike. The full team fight comes down. Chen is just trying to CC everyone while Lau bursts down the core. Friends are doing that with Aaron Rodgers. It's diving onto it. It's going to be. It's MYI. They, they do it. What? <laughs> they, they pulled it's an SK. Change. They, they pulled this guy. Chen is in the core right now. You could say they pulled this out of your SK. <laughs> oh, that doesn't even make sense. That was so good. Wow! Yeah, that was so good. The, also, like to point out that it was the nuke that finished the game. That was awesome. Wow! Very well played there. And that does mean that MYI takes the game. MYI takes the series. And that means MYI will go to the top of the Premier League with the only team to not lose a match. They've lost a map, but it's not enough. SK with incredible play there, but MYI there with such patience. They waited their opportunity. They did nothing for a certain few seconds, waiting for SK to appear on the minimap. Then they rushed straight to the turn and then straight to the core. Very well played. Very well played indeed. And now we're heading into our second match of the evening. Yes, we have more Finally. matches. <laughs> it's Eye to Heart Esports against Playing with Pain. And uh, let's pull up those uh, guys into our overlay. So, as you can see again on the stream, rank 4 Eye to Heart Esports, rank 5 Playing with Pain is Pain. And they're going to be our next match in the Heroes Premier League. But first, we're going to go into a little bit of a music break as we are going to be uh, getting a little bit of water, uh, uh, Thatcher. I think that's a very smart move right now. I would agree. Right. Thank you for watching, and we will be right back with the game uh, with match number two. I to Heart Esports against Playing with Pain is Pain.
Oh wow, apparently... <laughs> hey Tetch, what happens when the music runs out? Silence is what happens when the music runs out. Yeah, so apparently it's not just the sound of music that we're hearing in the hills, it is the sound of Bliss Heroes, as we're looking for eye to heart against playing with pain is pain. Um, Thatcher, last game was amazing. Was nothing short of amazing. Can playing with pain and eye to heart, can they make it happen? Can they create such an amazing game like we saw before? It's, they're going to be hard pressed to do it. I would like to think that they can. These are two teams that are once again very evenly matched. We ha uh, It's team rank number four versus rank number five, I believe. This is true. Yep, so it's another it's another two teams that are very close in terms of ranking. And what are their current win-loss ratios compared to each other? 1-2 uh, two, 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 and 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Two, two. okay. So who's on 1-2 and who's on 2-2? Two, two? So 2-2 two, two is for eye to heart esports. And 1-2 is for playing with pain is pain. Okay, so if playing with pain is pain, win this, then they are going to take the lead, I believe. Uh, they should, because they have less games played with the That'll same amount of That'll make them 2-2 as opposed to 2-3. Yeah. So, yeah, they should take the lead there for less losses, I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay, sounds good to me. I think right so. Now we're waiting for, uh, uh, right now we're waiting for someone to actually set up a lobby. So, so we can jump into it. Yeah. So for now, we're just going to. I, I I want to address some of the stuff that we see here in the in the uh, chat that people are calling heroes. Uh, doesn't have all that much depth to it in terms of itemization and stuff like that. I I, okay. I, I want to jump into that. I I really like those um lo those discussions, but they can pretty much be silenced with or I I hate I hate discussions. Guys, the game is cool. Let's keep... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I really enjoy discussing with uh, people about it. But my, my feeling is that this game is really easy to pick up because you don't have to go to a shop, find out what all the, item, all the items do, what all the items um, are building into. You don't have to grind for experience. You just get it from your team. You don't have to loss it. It makes the game so much faster. It's removed a lot of the... If we're going to have this conversation, then I will weigh, might as well weigh in. It removes a lot of what I would call fluff yes. from other MOBAs. And that's the, that's basically all I'm going to say. It removes a lot of fluff and puts the emphasis more on team play. And other than that, I'm not going to say if that's a better thing or if that's a worse thing. I'm going to leave that at that. I'm staying as far away from this as possible now that I've said that. <laughs> Are you going to steer away from it? Oh, because I don't want to be involved. Oh, no. Did something just happen? <laughs> oh, I... no. Yeah. Did what? it... Did this happen to you as well? What happened? Uh, I just got disconnected. I'm still online because I have the technological advantage. I'm attempting to relog. Wop wop. But you were saying you're going to steer away from it? I, I'm I staying away from this argument because it's not my argument to have. <laughs> it's not my it's not my place to say that a game is better than another game. I am I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying it's different. Yes, I, I have made, I have, I've said my, I've said my uh, piece on it. Um, said your piece. Until then, I'm staying out of. Uh, until someone asks me in an official interview, I shall stay out of that from there <laughs> well, on. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We no. are here with, with Thatcher Shoutcaster. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell your, tell us your thoughts on uh, this uh, new MOBA. <laughs> uh, my thoughts is it's a hero, it's a hero brawler, not a MOBA. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm failing to reconnect right now. You're failing to reconnect. Yeah, that's a... Uh... That's oh a dear. bad thing. That is a bad, in general. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. This is not good. This is not good whatsoever. Yeah. Um, yes. That's not good. All right, hang on. I'm going to attempt to reload again. Uh oh! I'm gonna close here. Oh no! I actually got in for a second there, and then it. And then you, then you hit again. Alt Four and you build out. Yeah, good, no, good it job. No, kicks uh, me Dutch. out again. Log in, connecting. Come on, hit. There we go. I'm back in. All Yay! Right. Panic averted, but that was interesting. Being kicked out for a few seconds there. Well, well, okay. I'm not going to even bother with that one. You make it all so easy, Toucher. You make it all so easy for me. If you wish to go down that route, then I will give as good as it comes. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm you. adult. 
I am an adult. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, I think we should probably head back to a break, really, because we we still don't have a lobby. Uh, we are we are currently uh, waiting for Leoric and uh, playing with Pain is Pain to get into uh, all the lobbies. So yeah, um, talents replace items, and apparently your comment is now trending on Twitter. Less fluff. Less fluff. Oh goody. Yeah, goody goody. Speaking of goody goody, I have this huge goody bag here uh, standing next to me, and I'm tempted to give some of it away. But uh, that, that will. Uh... I want to check with uh, the guy in charge. <laughs> I, I'm not. I, I'm not that. talking in the chat. I'm not talking to the stream. People uh, are like okay. give away. Ah, oh, no, I'm just going to give yeah, it to a friend. Away. Okay, I'm, I'm going enough. to give. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to get the wanna, chat you to go. Update well. the score, by the way, because apparently you've left the score on a screen as one one between SK and MYI. Apparently, it's I to heart. On my screen, it's uh, zero zero. Okay, well, people are saying in the chat like, wait, it's over at one one. Uh, I didn't change anything, to be honest. Okay. Well, that's, uh... that's not me. That's not me. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh... No, I think we... I definitely think we need to head to a break, because we don't really have much we can do here. We are currently waiting for the teams to actually join in, and once they uh, are here, then we can actually uh, make it happen. So for now, we are going to hop into a quick break, and we'll be right back with the uh, remainder of the... Of the of the uh, tournament, I believe that two matches have been rescheduled, but I'm not entirely sure due to that. But we'll we'll keep you updated. Stay tuned. Come on, why why you no work? Hmm. Apparently, my music stopped working. I am a very very. Let me just uh, fix that. Let me just fix that. My music stopped working. I, I love it when the music stops working, Thatcher. I love it when the music stops working. What 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 do you do if your music stops working? Leave complete. Okay. Right. Round two. Let's see if this works. Uh, I hope I don't blow all your ears off, but... Uh, play. There we go.